Hello, everybody. This is Noah and John, and we are from Urban Digs, and it is Fries Day. So you're going to get your weekly Manhattan market update. John, let's get right to it. I'm looking at supply 68.91. Going sideways. Show me that chart. Yeah, going sideways, trending down, I dare say. I mean, we dropped 0.7% from the week before. So uh, same old, same old in supply here. Boring, not much going on over there. But listen, you know, if I had to think ahead, John, we're going into May almost, you know, and, and if I look further, June, July, August, that's not listing season. So if supply is at this level going into May and we stay around here going into June, July, it might go down from there. So let's just keep an eye on that. Let's move over to pending sales. The Manhattan measure of demand came in at 45.19. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, 45.19, that's only 0.4% above last week. And that's the smallest weekly gain we've had since you know, going back to September. So it's way too early to say, but it seems like there might be a bit of a, a, a topping out phenomenon happening here, happening here in demand. Yeah, I agree. I think we're starting to get some sell signals going on right over here. We talked about it on last week's report as well. Um, we're not there yet. It looks like the sell signal is actually in the process of, of strengthening right now. But, but you know, past history um, and, and experience from this has told me that these things don't last forever. And then at some point it's going to fade. So if I'm a seller, I am, I am paying very, very close attention to um, my activity, my pricing and my traffic right now. Because if you're not getting that in a great market like now, um, you got to act. So that's that's a very good point. Um, John, let's go to the, the weeklies and see if we can get any indication around the corner of which way these things are going. Let's look at supply 548. That looks like a lot, but what do I know? John, show me the chart. Well, you know you know best, Noah. 548 is a lot. That's 11% higher than where we were last week. And that's the first 500 plus week we've had since, again, going back to September. So this is the time when we would normally expect that many listings to come on the market. But, uh, you know, as you as you mentioned earlier, I don't know how many more weeks we can have in which we're having that amount of come on as we head into right. the summer. Right. I think we have another month and a half of it, you know, and then it, and then it's over. So um, very, very, very good advice. Um, let's take a look at contract sign. Let's shift to the weeklies of demand. It looks like the market put in. Oh, my God, John, this is just getting silly. Three hundred and eighty two contracts signed last week. Unbelievable. Show me that chart. Yeah, 382. It's it's 10% higher than last week's, which was already at 347. Um, it, it's gangbusters hot, Noah. And what's crazy is that, you know, we ranked all the, the top contract signed weeks going back to like 2015, I think, you know, the actual last peak. And six of the top 10 are now in 2021. And what's bonkers about that, Noah, is those six are consecutive weeks. It's as if the market just caught on fire and then the heat intensified. You know what? The argument that we brought up that 2021 is shaping to be a snapback year from the 3,000 deals that we did not have last year that would put us on par for 13 to 14,000 transactions. And the record that we've ever had was March, uh, was 2007 of 13,000. It's just, it, and we're in it. We're in it right now and we're seeing it. It's just incredible to incredible. watch it unfold. The market's literally normalizing in front of our eyes. Let's look at um, the contract signed 382, Johnny, 382 uh, plus 178 off market. That's over 548. And that's why we're seeing supply go down. That's right. So, um, in case anyone's wondering, that is the answer. John, let's, let's move on to pricing um, because now we're going to have a lot of price discovery come in over the next months and quarters ahead. All right. And, and I want to tell users the best way to track Manhattan's recovery because it could, could be confusing. Okay. Here are two trends for tracking price action price per square foot which are the orange bars okay and median sales price which is the black line now what john and i did for this is we picked a point in time we picked january of 2008 january 1st 2008 and i wanted to show you how those price trends have changed since january of 2008 so that is why it shows you this big down move right over here that's the great financial crisis it's showing right. you the down move and it's showing you the recovery and it's showing you the comeback and it's showing you the wonderful peak to 2015. And then of course, it's gonna ultimately show you, or is it the COVID downturn? This is where it gets confusing. If you look at price per square foot, it is accurately showing you the downturn, okay? It is accurately showing you the COVID downturn. If you look at median sales price in the last year and a half, the combination of the 2019 mansion tax and all that mayhem, plus the COVID crisis mayhem and recovery, this is no longer a good pricing signal to me, John. That's what I see here. 
Yeah, it's interesting because if you were just to look at this chart, you'd say, oh, wow, median price, median price is up, but median price per square foot is down. So people are spending more, but spending less at the same time. How, how does that make sense? Exactly. And, and, and I'll tell you why. This is why we're here. Number one, you can't use median sales price as your price action tool. You got to have to be careful. Again, this is my job now to guys warn you guys, right? You want to use price per square foot. The purpose of this chart is how best to track Manhattan's recovery. All right. It's showing me right here when the bottom was right over here of last year, because this is since contract signed not close yeah. date. So it is kind of real time. And it's showing you the recovery right over here. So price per square foot is going to be your measure of the recovery. Okay. And there's a lot of data coming in. So it's going to be good. So that is takeaway. Number one, takeaway. Number two is exactly what you said, John. And why don't you introduce this chart and explain what you saw? Well, so no, what we're looking at here is just, you know, how, what's the change in the, the size of the apartments purchased since uh, January 1st, 2018. And you can see it's pretty steady doesn't really deviate from more than 10%. I mean, from 2008 all the way through to really early 2019. And then you can tell the average in this sort of sort of jiggers up a bit. So we're now looking at a state where on average, or I guess on median, the apartments that are being sold are larger. Exactly. And that is explaining the recovery that we are in right now. Buyers are chasing larger apartments. They're generally paying lower price per square foot for them. So it's just another piece of this puzzle to make us understand what's going on in the market right now. And again, you have to be very, very, very conscious of this, of the price per square foot trend, of the price per square foot trend, because that is going to be your tool for your comping and your price conversations, because if you, if you do median sales price, it's going to be all over the map because of what you just said, because of all those different types of apartments and larger apartments closing. Excellent stuff. Thank you, John Walker, for bringing up all of that details. I am Noah Rosenblatt. We're both from Urban Digs. Please don't forget, if you got questions, we got answers. Just visit our forum. Other than that, we wish you a very happy weekend, and we'll catch you next time.